Thanks, Tim, and thanks, everyone. Delighted to be here and give uh, an update on recent progress with Oncosil Medical. Oncosil Medical is a ASX-listed uh, commercial stage medical device company where we are commercializing a breakthrough implantable radiotherapy device for not just pancreatic cancer, but for also bile duct cancer or distal cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, next slide, please. We'll just run through quickly the investment highlights. It is a proven uh, world-class technology. The Oncosil device is a unique and innovative uh, platform technology where we actually implant radioactive uh, micro particles directly into the tumor of a, of a patient suffering pancreatic cancer or in, in uh, bile duct cancer directly into the solid tumor in the bile duct uh, using ultrasound guided endoscopy. If we just focus on pancreatic cancer, there is a clear global opportunity. It's a, it's a, a cancer of uh, a very insidious cancer with incredibly poor prognosis and, and poor survival rates. And we've identified a greater than a $3 billion market opportunity where this device could become standard of care in combination with uh, systemic chemotherapy. We are ready to commercialize um, following uh, being granted a CE mark for the United Kingdom and the EU earlier this year. The US FDA has also granted breakthrough device designation for this technology along with the Europeans. We have a highly attractive and scalable operating model as we move into commercialization. And we have a highly experienced board and management led by uh, Dr. Chris Roberts, former CEO of Cochlear. If we move on to the next slide, we'll, we'll walk through just some basic facts and figures around the company. As I said earlier, Oncosil Medical is a commercial stage medical device company. Our technology is considered a device rather than a drug. Um, Oncosil's first approved indication is locally advanced unresectable pancreatic cancer. We have also in, in, in the last uh, couple of months filed for humanitarian use for uh, the device in bile duct cancer. So we have approvals in the UK, EU, Singapore, and we announced earlier today the approval in Malaysia as well as New Zealand. Um, we are awaiting regulatory clearance in Australia and Hong Kong for the pancreatic indication on the back of our CE marking. As I said earlier, we have breakthrough designation by the UK, EU, and Singaporean authorities, and we have patent protection for this technology in key jurisdictions. If we look at uh, our trial data, we've completed six studies, uh, but the pivotal study that's secured CE marking and breakthrough device designation, both in the US and in Europe, is the PANCO trial, and it's shown excellent local disease control, prolonged overall survival, and a very encouraging surgical resection rate. All of the patients that we have treated in the clinical studies were unresectable or inoperable pancreatic cancer patients, and we're showing uh, one in four of these patients actually being downstaged so they can actually go into theater and have their tumors removed. And that is basically the only curative setting possible in pancreatic cancer is to have the tumor removed. And 85% of patients initially present without having, initially present with unresectable or inoperable tumors. That's what leads to the poor prognosis. Moving forward on the next slide, we can have a, a quick look at the technique. We basically have microparticles, uh, which comprise silica and, and phosphorus. Phosphorus 32 is the radioactive isotope. We mix it with a proprietary diluent. We use ultrasound guided endoscopy to target the tumor directly and we insert a needle into that tumor and we spray the, uh, the tumor with the microparticles in a uniform manner as best we can under those conditions to essentially irradiate the tumor from within, avoiding external beam uh, issues of, ex of external beam coming in, irradiating healthy tissue. No healthy tissue is irradiated using this technique as the radiation is delivered in a targeted manner inside the tumor. And that is essentially the technique. Um, moving forward, please. We all know that treating pancreatic cancer is exceedingly difficult. Uh, it is very challenging and existing treatments with pancreatic cancer are ineffectual. And there's been limited advancements in the past 20 years, resulting in very poor prognosis, with an uh, overall median survival of eight and a half months and five-year survival is less than 5%. Next slide, please. 
if we have a wealth of data and we believe it's quite compelling, and that's formed the basis of, of our recent approvals in multiple jurisdictions, the CE marking and US FDA breakthrough. But if you walk away from this presentation today, there's two key clinical outcomes that I'd like you to, to note. Oncosil has clinically proven to prolong overall survival or median overall survival in unresectable locally advanced pancreatic cancer. As we've just seen, five-year survival is less than 5%. Median overall survival in these patients is eight, eight and a half months. What we're showing with the use of this device is a, an effective doubling of the length of overall survival to 16 months. And that's based on a data cut from May last year when we did our final data submission to the European and the US authorities. On the far right-hand side of the slide, you can also see other uh, compelling data, but the, the key point is, if you apply the Oncosil device based on the clinical data to date with systemic chemotherapy, we're effectively doubling the median overall survival. Moving on to the next slide, just quickly in the interest of time, there is a clear market opportunity in Europe which includes the United Kingdom after Brexit, of more than 40,000 patients each year who have unresectable locally advanced pancreatic cancer. And we are currently focusing on this group, which comprise 40% of the total pancreatic cancer market. So we can segment the market into resectable, locally advanced and metastatic. And we believe we will play in all of those areas in the fullness of time, but our approved indication is in that, in, is in that uh, locally advanced unresectable cohort. Next slide, please. We talked about earlier that we've identified an addressable market globally of 3 billion uh, in an area of huge unmet need. And listed here, you can see quite clearly for the markets where we are approved or seeking approval, how we break that down in terms of uh, the, the opportunity. So recently we had Singaporean approval. That is a very attractive market for us in Asia approximately $9 million total addressable market. We announced earlier this morning uh, Malaysian approval. So we, we're not only focusing on Europe, but we're also focusing on unique and strategically important markets for us in Asia. And we look forward to Australian approval uh, in the near future. Next slide, please. So if we look at the Oncosil commercialization strategy, it's currently in full swing. The clear focus is on first sales in Europe based on the CE mark that we achieved earlier this year. Uh, we have a scalable manufacturing operation and despite the logistical challenges of COVID-19 that some of the earlier presenters referred to, it is challenging, but we are able to make and ship product to Europe to service um, the first customers that we expect to treat later this year, the patients we expect to treat later this year. We are establishing a a, a, a direct sales team in Europe currently, and we have multiple sites that we're currently onboarding, and we do expect first revenues in unresectable locally advanced pancreatic cancer in Europe later this year. We have received approvals in Singapore, Malaysia, and New Zealand, and we're currently awaiting uh, Australian and Hong Kong approvals. So we are moving quickly into our ASEAN and APAC um, commercialization. One area I'd like to talk about just very briefly is with this compelling technology, we do realize that there are a number of strategic partnerships in terms of R&D hookups, uh, in licensing opportunities and other unique geographies. And we're actively pursuing that as the third pillar of our commercialization strategy. And, and last, but by no means least, is our focus on the United States. One of our studies, um, which is currently ongoing, is the ONCPAC-1 study in the United States, also in unresectable locally advanced pancreatic cancer is ongoing. We have also filed only recently uh, for the humanitarian device exemption for bile duct cancer. And we expect to have an FDA decision, despite them being uh, very busy at the moment handling the COVID crisis. The FDA is indicating to us uh, by end of year, we will have an outcome measure and it's binary. We'll either be granted a, 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 an approval for bile duct cancer using our technology. Um, and we'll know that by the end of the year. Moving forward, please. Next slide. Just very quickly, so we've completed clinical studies and have approvals in the United Kingdom and Europe, New Zealand, Singapore, and Malaysia. And we are in active uh, phase of finalizing launch preparations. And we would expect to have sales in UK, Europe, and some of these ASEAN and APAC markets um, later this year. That's a very quick summary there. The United States, we have a dual strategy, one focusing on, on locally advanced pancreatic cancer, 
and obviously the bile duct cancer, we're awaiting the outcome from HDE um, FDA review. Just moving on to the next slide in the interest of time. So Europe, clear path to first revenues. We've done the trials. We have the evidence. We have a compelling argument clinically in an area of huge unmet need. We have the manufacturing and supply chain capability. It is a challenging environment with uh, global logistics, but we uh, remain confident of being able to deliver the doses in time for patients treatment later this year. We have all the regulatory approvals in place. We have appointed Nigel Lang, former Certex uh, European CEO to drive our commercialization program. He is building a team currently uh, with a sales force in the United Kingdom and throughout Europe with a particular focus on Germany, Italy, Spain, and uh, Benelux. Uh, we are currently onboarding hospitals and we are expecting, as I said, first revenues later this year. And we have a strong, we believe we'll have a strong network effect by targeting high value sites. Next slide, just quickly. This is our repeatable sales model. CE Mark allows us to strategically target key sites, and those sites will then uh, pass on their clinical experience to other sites and we'll move forward. Last few slides, please. Just quickly on the United States, we have a, a dual approach. One focusing on pancreatic cancer, which is a very significant opportunity. It's a $500 million opportunity. And with our breakthrough device designation, we believe we have an expedited development and approval pathway moving forward. With bile duct cancer, it's a much more near-term opportunity. It is a very small market in relative terms, but it's a demonstration for us that this device is truly a platform technology for not just pancreatic cancer, but for other solid tumors like bile duct cancer. So that's the US just briefly. And just the next slide, please. We'll skip that one and we've covered off the US strategy. Just to summarize, earlier this year, we completed the capital raising of a further 19 million. In relative terms, we have pro forma cash of 20 million, which is ample funds for us to move into our commercialization with great uh, gusto. We, and we have made a number of key milestones, achievements since that capital raising in May, such as the appointment of our president for Europe, the HDE filing for bile duct cancer, the regulatory filing in Australia, the approval in Singapore, the approval in Malaysia. And we do have a number of key catalysts uh, coming up, which is of interest. Uh, expected first sales in Europe, uh, regulatory decision on, on bile duct cancer in the United States, which I believe will be a significant milestone for the company. And obviously getting approval in Australia and approval in Hong Kong. And in the interest of time, uh, Tim, I will pause there for questions. Thanks, Daniel. A uh, couple of questions here. Um, so with, with approvals from the, the U, uh, EU, UK and, and US, why would our own uh, TGA take so long to grant approval? Uh, that's a very uh, uh, thorny uh, question, but I'll be, I'm on the public record that um, the TGA does require to, to look at the, the, the dossier that we've submitted. Um, they will obviously clearly not wanting to speak on behalf of them, but the data is compelling. It's been approved by multiple jurisdictions, but the system in Australia is that they must review it. Um, so we await their decision. Um, it, it, we, we have our own uh, regulatory system and we have to follow that. There's some questions here around Certex. Uh, yeah. Certex seem to be in a similar market yeah. size. Is that right? Is there comparables for, for, for Oncosil to draw on here? There are, compar there are some comparisons to be made, but the technology is in many ways significantly different. Um, but Certex um, does give us an indication of what is possible. It's a source of pride for me and my team that uh, the two leading bra uh, brachiotherapy um, techniques and devices are Australian. Certex pioneered brachiotherapy in, in liver cancer, and I believe we are pioneering, pioneering um, brachiotherapy in pancreatic cancer. But the biggest difference is the Certex technology, as compelling and as elegant as it is, is limited to uh, using a discrete blood flow to deliver their uh, microspheres to, to tumours with a particular focus in the hepatic system or for, uh, or for the liver, where our device is for solid tumours generally. So we have a bigger market potential because we can go from treating theoretically bile duct cancer, liver cancer, which we've done two studies in, and of course, pancreatic cancer. But theoretically, we can treat any solid tumor. So in terms of comparisons, there is some comparisons to be drawn, 
but there are also, I think, a, a bigger market opportunity to be captured in the fullness of time. And, and how strong is your intellectual property protection ar around um, what you do? As I said, it, just briefly during the presentation, we have full IP coverage in all the key geographies, uh, both for the microparticles, for the use of the technique, and for the proprietary diluent. I think it is exceedingly difficult for anyone to be able to uh, reverse engineer the technology. And in any case, we have it fully covered through, through requisite IP.